Well, it's good to have back a couple guests from Brilliant Smile, especially uh, Dr. Mashid Faramund. Nice to see you again. And it's been a while since you've been on, right? Yeah, almost uh, over a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good to have you back. You brought along Rhonda Reardon, who is a patient of yours. Mm -hmm. And Rhonda, we'll get to you in okay. just a moment. But uh, again, welcome back. Nice to have you here. What's been going on? I, I've heard that uh, you might be taking another overseas trip, right? You used to go to, didn't you go to uh, Nepal yes, at I one did. time? Did you go recently? No, that was about two years okay. ago. Okay, yeah. all right. So the plan is maybe to go to Vietnam this time or maybe to Philippines. They're not sure about the country yet, but we'll make another trip definitely for a volunteer job. Is this sort of a consortium of uh, doctors and dentists yes. that go to these different countries yes. and help out? Yes. And I would think what you come across there, um, you know, probably people that have never even seen a dentist. Of That's course, that true. happens in this country, but <laughs> over there, I'm sure it's That's much more true. prevalent. That's true. And do you, when you go to these countries, what do you bring along with you? Do you, do you bring along, uh, if, you know, if you need to fill cavities, you need to do dental work, uh, uh, full equipment with you and all? Well, there are a lot of dental companies that they're donating their stuff and mm -hmm. they can take us take this with us and that's that's how it works nice yeah well that's great well maybe next time you go you can take some photos and sure. bring it back for us sure so uh Rhonda uh you're a patient yes. of Brilliant Smile how long have you been going there over 15 years we finally wow. figured out I know um Dr. Farman is the dentist I've had the longest of any dentist in my life and I have had a long life I'm very old did you know that Ken you don't look that old <laughs> <laughs> well a good Good part of that is because I, Dr. Fairmont's such a good dentist. I, a little history, um, I didn't like the dentist when I was a child. My father couldn't afford to take us to the dentist, so it made it easy when I said I'm not going. Yes. But <laughs> I had 26 cavities by the time I was 11 years old. Oh, wow. So anybody that wants to keep, make sure that they um, deal with their children's dental health. But Dr. Fairmont has had to redo a lot of things in my mouth over the last 15 years and she's done an excellent job. One of the things I really like about her is um, she keeps herself trained, so is always up on the latest things, but she always explains what she's doing. And it, you know, not uh, with all these big dental terms, mm -hmm. um, but very, very carefully and very logically explains what she's doing. I've had three implants hasn't it been three? I've yes. just just had this last one. Mm -hmm. And um, through the whole process, uh, it was start to finish in her office. I didn't have to go out and do anything oh, that's else. Nice. It was great. So she's an excellent dentist, and um, I could show you all my implants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've seen a lot of innovations in dentistry over the last probably like 10 years. And one of the key things that uh, I, I have noticed anyway is I guess in, in the medical profession in general, is making the patient far more comfortable than what they used to be and getting things done that need to be done much more quickly and much more efficient and less evasive than it used to be, right? Yes, yes. Um, and like she said, it's very important to explain to the patient you know, what needs to be done and what we are doing so they feel more comfortable. I'm serving the community right now over about 20 years, yeah. 10 years in the other office, 10 years at my own office. And um, um, Laguna with this community, they're great, nice people. And um, all, I would say most of them, over 99% are very educated. You can mm -hmm. talk to them, you can explain to them. And, um, and that feels great you know, to be their dentist. I think that's a very important thing, and, and you mentioned this, Rhonda, about a, a doctor uh, that's going to explain things to you and maybe give you different options, because quite often there's, there's different options. Right. And I think the most important thing is not try to maybe upsell you to something that right. you don't need. And right. because then the patient feels like, well, you know, who am I here for, uh, myself or, or, the, right. den or yes. the dentist, right? Yes. Right. And uh, when you, you mentioned about your implants, you go through the process and explain, you, pr you probably have even little models that you can show and things like that, right? Yes. Of course, nowadays it's probably all digital. Yes, <laughs> that's what we do. And we have all kind of machines to, 
uh, Rhonda knows that everything uh, can be done at my own office. Mm -hmm. She does not have to go anywhere for That's great. Uh, you know special X-rays or panoramic. We, are, we have all the equipments, all updated, all you know perfect to serve the patients. Yeah, and nowadays when you get even just get your X-rays, it's just instant. You bring over the computer uh, yes. screen digital, and yeah. you can show everything. And uh, I've even seen where they have the little mouth camera. Yeah. You can go in there. Intro camera, yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, it's, and it's uh, more, a lot more comfortable it than is. what it used to be. And that's uh, the other thing in that um, I think the first time that I went to see Dr. Faramon was brand new, brand new experience for me going to see Dr. Faramon. And um, I, I think that's one of the first things she did is made me feel mm -hmm. comfortable and explained what was going on with uh, my mouth and talked about the different crowns that I had and, and that kind of stuff. But the other thing that she does very well is gives you options. She doesn't, like you said, she doesn't try and sell you a right. certain thing, but she will tell you, okay, these are your options. And for someone like me, I really appreciate that because then I get to make the choice and then it's my responsibility, mm -hmm. right? And then she's very careful of this last implant that I had. I think it was April that I broke, that the tooth broke. It's like, oh, are you serious? And I just knew it was gonna be an implant because of the way that it broke. So. Um, I, and I can't remember, is it supposed to be two months or three months that you... Two and a half months. Usually. Two and a half months. But she, when she took x-rays, and she took many x-rays, let me tell you, every time I went in for a cleaning, um, because of the implant, she would not, I tried to get her to do it faster and quicker, <laughs> but she would not. And she said, no, it's not ready. We want to make sure that it is in there and it's solid. It's and um, so I really appreciate that. She wouldn't give in to me, which yeah. is good. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you want. Yes, uh, she's the expert, I'm not. <laughs> there is a specific time that you need after the implant is placed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so to be restored so it's like minimum two and a half months by book and okay. you don't want to you know just go earlier because if you go earlier you might you know dislodge the implant and the whole thing is failing oh know? okay so, so two and a half months is a must and then based on the x-ray what it shows we go from there and we restore it to done time all right that's yeah. that's good to know mm -hmm. uh what about just in general people um taking care of their teeth on a day-to-day -day basis we have so many different kinds of toothpaste out there and, and toothbrush, the spin brushes and all that. Is there any one kind that you recommend or are they all pretty up uh, nowadays, whatever brand you like, pretty much up to the same standard? I imagine they all follow kind of the same yeah, regulations as as, and all. As long as you change your toothbrush every two and a half months and you're using the proper you know, toothpaste, the brand really doesn't matter. Okay. So it has, to have, it has to have some fluoride in it and some, um, you know, uh, it's not like that, you know, specific brand. A lot of patients that are coming to my office and say, which uh, electric toothbrush are you recommending? I don't any. I don't recommend any of those. Mm -hmm. The school that I went to um, here in, um, uh, back in Germany and here in uh, Loma Linda and UCLA, they were telling us, you know, hey, electric toothbrush is uh, only needed, only needed if the patient has certain disabilities, you know, to Really? To brush the teeth. Yeah. So uh, unless you have you're uh, actually uh, you know suffering from periodontal disease, then you want to massage your gum and everything. Actually, a normal toothbrush will do the job, but electric toothbrush is a good help. That's okay. That's what we were taught. About. Yeah, I was wondering with yeah. my you know my daughter who was eight. You know you can't get kids yes. to right. brush their teeth. Yes. So uh, she has a regular one, and she has you know one of those little you know six dollar spin brushes because yeah. we're hoping that she can just. Okay, hold it on each tooth for maybe, you know, count to 10, move to the next tooth. You know, yeah. at age eight, they don't have right. 32 teeth yet, so yeah. it can go pretty quickly. <laughs> but at least we're thinking, okay, maybe she can give each, yeah. each tooth the attention That's it needs. That's a big help. I don't know. But if you're really changing your toothbrush, again, a lot of people that have an electric toothbrush and they don't even change the head. That's true. Right. And that's, that's not true. right. No. That's not, the point is that the bristles, they might look okay, but they are not okay. If okay. You look, they look uh, under the microscope, they are not okay anymore. So that's the time to change it. Two and a half months is the average, and any toothpaste will work. I'm not sending any toothpaste or any brand or any electric toothbrush at my office. I just tell them, change your toothbrush. And most of the patients, they, they get their toothbrushes from me. Yes. So every two and a half months, every three months, and they come. <laughs> there and you I go. make sure that I have a good one. <laughs> All right. It's great to have you on. And uh, uh, 
when you go overseas, wherever you end up going, you know, take some photos. That would be a nice piece that you come sure, back here and sure. we look at those. That would be enjoyable. Rhonda, nice to meet you. Good to meet you too, Ken. Thank you. And maybe, uh, maybe we'll see you again. You just never know. We just, yep, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Great to have you both on. And again, Brilliant Smile right over here in Laguna Hills, 949-716-7166. Or you can go to Laguna Hills, Brilliant Smile, Dot com and uh, you have a great, uh, great doctor, as you know, and uh, we've known her for quite a while, so it's good to have you back Over on 10 again. Years, Over yeah. 10 years. Over 10 years, yeah, it's great. All right, we'll be right back.